Lance Spellcheck here for Arrow in the Head's The F***ing Black Sheep, where we take a look at the opposing opinion of the genre's most divisive films. <laughs> what is a dream? They say it's a window into the subconscious, a vast, never-ending realm where one's decisions and ideas can manifest into whatever may be desired. Like a shark hunting in the deep blue sea, the dream world has its own unique predator, a monster, murderer, and child molester. Its name is Frederick Charles Kruger. We have touched upon Pinhead, Jason Voorhees, Candyman, and Leatherface here on The Black Sheep, but it's time to once again delve into one of the classics with an entry from the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Now, besides the original, Dream Warriors, and A New Nightmare, any one could be argued as The Black Sheep, but I'd like to take a path far less traveled and argue the inarguable with Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. This may seem controversial, but there really isn't a bad Elm Street film. Sorry, there's not. Elm Street at its worst becomes campy fun with an interesting visual dream aesthetic compared to the competition. And Freddy Krueger doesn't have a Hellraiser Revelations, Halloween Resurrection, or Jason Goes to Hell type of entry. Now, let me make this completely clear. I come from a Voorhees family. <laughs> But even I can't deny the consistency. From 1984 till its end in 91, New Line Cinema put out six Nightmare films in seven years. We can call that time the Kruger boom. And for New Line, Freddy Krueger was their Credence Clearwater revival of horror. I see the moon A decade into the rise of MTV, Freddy was, well, cool. He had become the Fonz of Elm Street. And Freddy's dead? continued with that same make and model. A lot of backlash had come from overexposure. Wacky Freddy had worn thin, but New Line doubled down and made one of the craziest goddamn films from a major horror franchise that I have ever seen. We start off in Springwood, Ohio, said the future of 1999. We are introduced to our unnamed teen protagonist. You know, mid-twenties. He is the last child in Springwood and the town itself has sort of self-destructed. Kruger's terror has not only left the town childless, but has driven it into hysteria and madness. There are classrooms going on with no students, a carnival with no kids, yet the adults left in town have no bearing on reality. The journey is getting Freddy's daughter Maggie, yeah, he has a daughter here, who runs a troubled youth center back to Springwood. They are both on a collision course of destiny. If you lay the plot out, it's pretty grim and an interesting watch with a tone being contradictory to the actual plot. Freddy's Dead is presented as a fourth wall breaking cartoon. This isn't quite meta, but it's the most self-aware of the series. This is usually pinpointed as its biggest flaw, but I'd like to argue it's a delight if you can view it as is. This film is its own beast. We get actual shots that were taken and filmed like old school Looney Tunes. With the body outline cut from the dream realm, Kruger pushing a bed of nails like a severely burned Wile E. Coyote, to Spencer bouncing around to an actual cartoon sound effect. It's pure gonzo, and one you may need to fully accept to enjoy. It also injects campy, almost melodramatic elements. These intersect with the wacky surrealism the film sets up. This was the 90s, and it came out during the heyday of Twin Peaks, which was an obvious influence on the film. We're in Twin Peaks here. I'll tip my hat to the effort but director Rachel Talale didn't have the nuance or strangeness that Lynch conjures up naturally. There's a reason Twin Peaks The Return was considered groundbreaking, while something like uh, The Return of the X-Files? <sighs> Not so much. By the time we reach the end, with Maggie entering Freddy's dreamscape, it's clear. The inmates are now running the asylum. I do want to shit on the film for its tacky use of 3D, but I must admit, it's, it's almost noble that they tried hard enough to make it relevant by writing it into the actual plot of the film. I gotta give them credit. This entire sequence is where Freddy's dead hits its stride. It was described as Mr. Toad's wild ride through hell. And yeah, sounds about right. We get the most backstory on Kruger himself, with the human side of Robert England getting the most screen time in the series. We see his murderous tendencies develop as a child. <laughs> The abuse from Alice Cooper as a teen, and the whole sequence of him murdering his wife and emotionally scarring his daughter. It's a series high point, yet it, it gets buried in the absurdity of everything else. 
This film is a time capsule. I always love how they brush off Spencer's pipe bomb. Life was very different before Columbine. Freddy's dead embodied everything that was the 90s and the innocence that came with it. Freddy Krueger had a Nintendo Power Glove. We get a Roseanne and Tom Arnold cameo. Johnny Depp did an anti-drug PSA. All we were really missing was Chris Cornell drinking a Crystal Pepsi. We even get a theme song written by Iggy Pop. Freddy's dead. Not really the 90s, but I love myself some Iggy Pop. Unless he acts. Well, what's it gonna be, hero? I don't know what you're talking about. Was Wes Craven's new Nightmare Superior more of a proper ending? Yes. But it does not diminish the wild ride that is Freddy's Dead the Final Nightmare. To open your film with Freddy mimicking the Wicked Witch? To ending it with a fight playing out like an R-rated Three Stooges sketch? I am sympathetic to those who felt betrayed, but when you look at the whole catalog, you can acknowledge its absurd intent and love it for what it was aiming for. What started as serious horror ended as a stoner comedy with fantasy elements and black humor. I'm glad that something as ludicrous as this could ever exist. The freedom given to directors and writers with major film brands has become an antiquated idea. This film could never happen now, not in theaters. Franchise movies are shaped and boiled down in committees to reach the broadest audience. They play it straight down the middle as not to challenge or stray too far from what has proven in a lab to work. Freddy's Dead failed in a spectacular way. It was on a road to nowhere, but there's no other road I'd rather be on. Go big or go home. I'd rather you fail with heart than succeed with mediocrity. Kids.